The account of the Last Supper is found in Matthew 26, starting in verse 17. Jesus and his 12 followers share a meal together for the first day of Passover. Jesus breaks the news to his followers that one of them is going to betray him. The followers are gassed and grieved. Who is going to betray Jesus, our friend? One of the followers is Judas, who betrays Jesus and receives money in exchange for his betrayal. Judas joins in the discussion wondering who to betray Jesus, so he would not look suspicious. Jesus looks at Judas and says, it is Judas. The room subsides into an awkward silence. Everyone's starting to open mouth at the paling Judas. But Jesus, he just goes back to his meal. The fathers finally go back to their meals as well. Conversation stilted. Where was the judgment from Jesus? Where was the lightning bolt that was supposed to zap Judas? But Jesus just picks up a piece of bread, thanks God for it, and says, this is my body. Then he picks up his cup, claiming this wine is his blood that he's gonna pour out for all of humanity. Jesus was going to die for sinners. For the betraying Judas, for the imperfect followers sitting at the table, and Jesus died for each of us flawed people. He welcomed Judas to the table when he had every right to turn him away. Jesus welcomes us even when we don't deserve it. We have a seat at the table with Jesus. Jesus picks up a piece of bread and holds it up for all to see. This is my body, which is gonna endure unimaginable suffering and agony just for you. My body is gonna bleed just for you. I am gonna die just for you. I could not fathom living you living in eternity without me, Jesus says. I could not imagine you living another moment without me. So I'm gonna die so you can have life. I am gonna die so you don't perish. So you can always be with me. There will never have to be another moment when you are not with me. What undeserved unexplainable, unconditional, relentless grace and love that is. We don't deserve it. We didn't work for it and we didn't earn it. But he welcomes us to the table anyways and he offers us life. A cup of wine and a piece of bread. His arms are always open. He gazes kindly at us and his face cracks into a smile every time he sees us. We don't have to be ashamed coming to him. We do not have to be afraid. We do not have to be guilty coming to him. Shame, fear, guilt, they do not have a place in the presence of God. We can just receive what he has for us. We can open our hearts and hands towards heaven. He lavishes us in love and pours abundant grace into our lives, more than we could ever imagine. The Lord says he will never be done pouring his life into yours. So I urge you, church, to receive what God has for you. I pray that he touches each of your individual lives and pours life into your life in a way you could never imagine. Let's partake of the bread. Let's partake of the juice.
Let us pray together. Lord, I pray that we experience your incredible gift of life in a new and meaningful way today. I pray that your love and grace seep into the very core of our souls. And we realize how incredibly blessed we are to have a deep and meaningful relationship with you. Thank you, God, for all that you have done and are still doing. Amen.